Before It Rains, Al Stanker. Hello, everybody. My name is Al Stankard. Um, I used to go by the moniker Harlan Venison Online. It's funny, I could say so many things about what I think are wrong with the world, but it's occurred to me that people, their brains are very limited and finite, and you have to unlock their hearts a little bit first before you can get them to see the world as you perhaps see it. Um, I was a very bitter young man. I think if, if I were 14 right now, I'd be far fash. Um, I felt sort of suffocated under the crush of anti-white scapegoating and rhetoric when I was younger. But then as I got older, I got so, um, I felt so bleak about it and I realized that we need some sort of uh, non-violent means of bringing humanity together and ending the identity politics, which, call me crazy, but I think it is driving socioeconomic inequality in the US. It's a smokescreen for the abuses and, and excesses of global capitalism, which I'm not opposed to fundamentally. I think globalism is inevitable, and I think capitalism could use a little bit of tweaking, but it is not so far from human nature. Uh, and so for me, I, I see an opportunity to stave off great catastrophe. I feel like our society is in a doom loop. These people over here, many of them are blindly hating us, and a small minority would gladly put a bullet in my head or Jason's head if they could. During inauguration, I was there, I was walking among the protesters, and I remember Richard Spencer randomly showed up, and I was there by sheer coincidence. And when the guy came and punched Spencer, I pulled him off, and I proceeded him on foot peacefully to try to challenge his ideas. I didn't punch him though. Um, and I got death threats galore after that. Uh, Antifa literally uh, went after my family. They, uh, they called my sister at her work while I was on a plane to Ecuador, and they said I was in a coma in a hospital in DC. And they were insisting that she go there immediately. I can only assume to abduct her to get to me. Um, my point here is that I see how severe things are and how blinded people are. And if they want to fix racism, they have to think a little bit about what racism is in 2018 in order to solve the problem. Like if you're stuck in a riptide, getting pulled out to sea, you can't flail your arms maniacally. You have to pause and appreciate the situation and relax and think about what's going on. If you want to solve a physics problem, you don't start doing math immediately. You think about what problem you're modeling. And in my mind, the excesses of the scapegoating of whites, to repeat, is intended to draw attention away from the real problem. And it disheartens me to see that even while there's still some people who believe in a world without identity politics, like Bernie Sanders, even he is being pulled through the muck and it's driving society apart. After inauguration, I was worried of civil war. I forgot about it for a year. But then at this time last year, I was in uh, Hungary. I just got back from India. And it occurred to me, this is a very, very serious age we live in. And it sounds crazy, but I'm all for white equal rights. But I just want, I want a world that fits together in one piece for more than just a few more years. And these people have to pause and think about what we're ultimately trying to change. 
even if our hearts, some of our hearts are filled with hatred, maybe it's because we haven't learned how to express ourselves the correct way, in a way that maybe they can understand. I'm not a nationalist, I'm not even alt-light, to be honest. I believe that the scapegoating of whites is inaccurate on several, several levels. Baffled stairs. Okay. Who's next? Jovi? Okay. Hey, brother. I got it. Yeah, hello. Say what? I can say your name. No. I don't want thunderous applause. I'll just introduce myself as Sam Hyde. Yeah! Yeah. <laughs> 